Friends, in this video, let us know how to analyze a rotational vibrational spectrum of a diatomic molecule like HBr, hydrogen bromide. The model of hydrogen bromide can be visualized in this way. This represents a hydrogen atom and this represents a bromine atom. And these two atoms are held by, bound by a polar covalent bond. And our aim in this experiment is to estimate the length of this covalent bond. As you know, at molecular level, such diatomic molecules will have predominantly two types of motion. One is vibrational motion. All diatomic molecules have only one mode of vibration that is stretching which occurs along the bond axis like this. And also this molecule has rotational motion also. The rotational motion can be split into, comp into three components, one along x axis, wherein along x axis the molecule rotates like this. Along this axis, the moment of inertia will not be so much uh, value, will not have so much value, since we neglect that. And the, the rotational motion of the molecule about y axis can be visualized in this way. The molecule can rotate about the y axis, about y axis like this. And about z axis, the mo this molecule can rotate in this way. So, the moment of inertia of this molecule about y axis and z axis are same. So, we take the moment of inertia of this molecule about any one axis, say about y axis. These diatomic molecules have both translational and vibrational motions at molecular level simultaneously. So, the, uh, this, uh, this uh, vibration and rotational motion, simultaneous motions, give rise to uh, energy level diagrams like this. Friends, as I told you, the vibrational and rotational motions of this molecule which occur simultaneously will give rise to this type of energy level diagram, wherein this band represents the lower vibrational state with few uh, rotational energy levels with different J values and the upper one represents, this band represents the higher vibrational state. Again here also we have few rotational, quantized rotational energy levels with different J values. The transitions occur from uh, one vibrational state to another and one rotational energy to another uh, another value. These transitions are governed by one selection rule that is delta J is equal to plus or minus 1. So, delta J represents J final minus J initial. Delta J is equal to plus 1 this type of selection rule wherein the transition occur from lower rotational energy state to higher rotational energy state give rise to R branch, R branch. And here the transitions occur from higher rotational energy state to lower rotational energy state that gives rise to P branch. So, these P and R branches are visualized or can in this uh, spectrum like this, wherein this spectrum is or this uh, spectrum of HBR is uh, percentage transmission versus the uh, wave numbers. Where when we have different branches, this, this branch correspond to R branch with various lower uh, J values and this branch corresponds to P branch. Again here also this different P values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, these represents the uh, lower J values in the transition process. Uh, friends, now we will come to the actual uh, measurements that we do using this spectrum wherein we do first the measurement or the scale reading corresponding to the actual uh, wave number values where we have here 2700, 600, 500, 400. The corresponding scale reading I take that is for 2700 the scale reading is 2.2 and for 600 it is around 7.5 like this and 2500 13 centimeter and 2400 is around 18.5 centimeter. So, this, this, these are the measurements corresponding to standard wave number values and the scale reading. And we also make the measurements from this reference axis taking this as a reference axis. We make measurements with respect to branch lines also. Here we have the R branch. The peak of the R branch it is how much distance away from the y axis that we measure. For example, here R1, R1 branch 
corresponding scale reading is around 8.2, 8.2 here. And R2, R2 is around 7.5. Like this, I take the scale reading for all branch or for all branches or for all uh, components in this branch R1, R2, R3 up to R11. Similarly, without disturbing the scale position, we measure the scale readings corresponding to the components in the P branch also. P1, for P1, the scale reading is around 10.8. So, P2, P3. Like that, I record the scale readings corresponding to each component in both P branch and R branch. And these readings, the two different sets of readings, one corresponding to the wave number and another corresponding to the branch lines, we tabulate them, uh, the scale readings, in this way. In the first tabular column, I record the scale reading and the standard wave number values and we plot a graph here. The first graph is uh, standard wave number versus the scale reading. And in the second tabular column, we record the scale readings corresponding to each component in the P branch and R branch, like this. So, for, for R0, we are not considering this, start from R1. R1 the, for, for this branch, for this component, scale reading R2, R3 like that. You record the scale readings for all the elements in the both P and R branches. And the corresponding in the next column, we have the wave number. For this particular uh, scale reading, what will be the corresponding wave number? This we find out from the calibration graph here. For example, for a particular value of R, the scale reading, the corresponding wave number is this value. Like this, we find out the wave numbers here, wave number corresponding to each scale readings for different components in the R branch also and P branch also, pre branch also. And then we take the difference between the wave number of this P1 and R1. We, we take the difference between these two, new P minus new R. And that we record in the next tabular column here, wherein we have two columns, 2j plus 1 and delta nu. j, 2j plus 1 corresponds to, means this column we get by giving different values to j. If j is equal to 1, 2j, 2 plus 1 is 3, like that, 2. 2 plus 1, 5, like that, you get 2j plus 1 and the different uh, the difference in the wave number. And again, plot the graph between these two. That graph finds, we will find like this, second graph. It is delta nu versus 2j plus 1. We get a straight line. And you find out the slope of this uh, straight line. That will give us the 2b, where b represents the rotational constant. So friends, as I told you, in the second graph, we will get the slope and slope will give us 2b and from this we get the b value and use this b here to calculate the moment of inertia of the molecule about y axis and use this moment of inertia value to calculate the bond length of the molecule. We will have this formula iy by mu and n. n you will have if you calculate the mu in terms of a mu and if you substitute the values of m and m2 in cases, then this mu is not necessary. So this way, we can calculate the interatomic distance of the bond length of the molecule, which comes out to be around 1.4 angstrom per minute.